everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Cox, and my research topic is real life investigation tactics versus criminal based TV shows. Question mark. So, um, my research question when doing my research was how do criminal based shows compare to real world investigations based on technique? And what I mean by that is I'm looking at the difference between how crimes are handled in television compared to how that same crime is handled in real life by police officers. My problem statement is there is a problem with how over-dramatized criminal-based actually, criminal-based TV actually is. It gives an unrealistic view of the job and how our justice system actually works. So a few definitions that I have um, throughout this presentation are the CSI effect, um, and this can be best described as a phenomenon where television educated jurors are more likely to not convict someone who is guilty um, because procedures and techniques they observe, observed from fictional television shows were not applied to the case. Um, and this is a product of television being over dramatized, um, things happening in episodes or in specific TV shows that are just do not happen in real life at all that can cause a bias. Um, and so that is what the CSI effect is. Context analysis um, is a research tool used to determine the presence of certain words, themes, or concepts within some given quality data. Clearance rates, um, that is the percentage amount of how many of a specific kind of case was solved compared to how many of that case there actually were. So say there were 10 cases on um, robbery and only seven of those cases were actually solved the clearance rate of that would be 70%. Some more definitions I have are observed sales. Um, this has to do with a narcotic situation. Under this law, people can be punished for having possession of any amount of narcotics that they intend to sell, not for actually selling or being a part of selling drugs. Meta-analysis is the examination of data from a number of independent studies um, of the same subject in order to determine overall trends. And lastly, case study is an intensive study about a person, a group, or a people, or a unit, which aims to generalize over several units. So my gap. Um, when researching this, most of what I could find um, on this topic was the CSI effect itself, and not actually how criminal-based television in real life actually compared to each other. Um, so to deepen this topic of how criminal-based TV can affect jurors, I decided to look into how it could affect people in general. And my hypothesis, a few of them would be, um, I hypothesized that most criminal-based TV shows would be overly dramatized or overdone. Um, I hypothesized that the televised crimes would be very off time-wise. And what I mean by this is, when you think of a crime, um, watching television crimes, the whatever happened is usually solved, you know, like a week or you know, a month, something like that. But real life is not like that. You know, crimes can take two years to be solved compared to how it would be solved in a month on TV. So I hypothesized that it would be very off in that way. Um, and I also hypothesized that the real life crimes will be harder to solve than the ones found on TV. So um, the significance of my study is it is important for everyone to be informed about how the criminal justice life actually is, how this stuff actually works, what actually goes on in that job. Um, it could be used to help mental health warnings or triggerings, um, or it could add to the overall authenticity, or at the very least, objectify to the sensationalized program. This study will also be great to help others research. I believe this can add more depth to their studies. So um, my method of inquiry, I used context analysis. Um, context analysis, like I said before, it is the study of documents and com communication artifacts, which might be text of various formats, pictures, audio, or videos. Um, it can be used to rationalize analysis, which is computational techniques serving to discover specific relations between several objects of study. Um, and pretty much I chose this just because, I mean, I'm watching TV, and that is just the best way that I could do my research was through context analysis. 
So once again, I chose this method um, over others such as meta-analysis or case studies because the study of video and documentation was one of the best ways for me to gather my data, um, especially when focusing on the television aspect of my paper because that is completely digitalized and audio video. Um, and you know, when looking into the real world stuff, yes, there was videos that I watched, documentaries, but I was also reading field manuals and things like that. So it just had to do more with the actual TV part. Um, a case study is more used for singular people or a singular unit. So that's also why I didn't choose case study because when you're thinking of crimes and you know police workers, all that, that's a, that's a big group of people. That's a broader um, area of that. So I could not use case studies due to that. Um, so another thing for method of inquiry was for my research, I decided to put all of my data in pie charts um, to display my work in an easily understandable way. And when organizing my work before my procedure and before I actually went about researching, um, I put my episodes, my shows, and the crimes all into what is called a box chart. So um, this is my box grid or box chart. Um, as you can see here, I have four sections on the side, murder, narcotics, forgery, and robbery. And at the top, I have my four criminal-based TV shows that I've watched, which were Psych, Monk, Chicago PD, and White Collar. And um, within this chart, I had the name of the episode, what show it was, what season it was, what episode it was, how long it was, and where I was streaming that episode. So this is really how I organized all of um, my fictional This is just um, an example pie chart of what my real pie charts look like with all my data in them. Um, so these percentages don't really mean anything. This is just what that is. So for my context, um, my research does not have a time frame. It's really only a matter of specific crimes. Anything that I did get information wise, such as field manuals, um, I just got from recent years, just because it would be the most updated, um, you know, due to that. You know, you just don't want to get, you don't want to get outdated field manuals. That's just not smart. The demographic of this research is popular with those ages to 18 to around 35 um, because those are the people most likely to watch some of those TV shows, such as the ones I have chosen. So a few of my data sources. Um, here I have again my shows. Um, I use fact or fiction. The Myth and Reality of the CSI Effect by Stephen M. Smith, which is where I got pretty much all of my understanding of what the CSI Effect actually was. Um, and I also found things such as clearance rates, rates and their definitions on a government website. So for my results. With murder, um, whenever I was on this topic, I found that from four episodes and four shows, 14.3% used fingerprinting within their episodes to solve their case. 7.1% used witnesses at any time, whether that be eyewitnesses or you know just somebody that was around and kind of knew what was going on. 21.4% checked ballistics, and that is the use of a firearm, um, and they did that in order to solve their cases. 14.3% questions people involved or connected to the case, um, whether that be they were right in the center of what was going on, or was a family member or a friend or a significant other of somebody that was involved. 14.3% um, used undercover cops or operations um, within their murder cases to help solve a case. And 28.6% checked for clues and traced them in order to solve the case. This is my pie chart um, for my murder section specifically on television. So for narcotics, 16.7% um, used undercover operations. 25.0% used surveillance of suspects. And what I mean by that is they either had somebody following a suspect around or they were checking cameras in the streets and just you know keeping track on people. 25% um, questioned people connected to the case. 33.3% took down the group in action, and what I mean by that is they were able to find the group that was involved with the narcotics, 
whether they were making something or selling something and they were able to go in and take that with them. And 0% use observed sales. This is my pie chart for tactics to use evolve in the targets page in television. Forgery. 14.4% um, use special agent workers who are experts in forgery, um, whether it be art or like forging bonds of some sort. 14 or 15.4% brought in somebody who was a expert, knew exactly what it was, knew exactly how to tell the difference between real and fake and brought them in to help solve the case. 30.8% trace clues from crime scenes. 15.4% studied the actual forgeries themselves that were involved in the case. 30.8% conducted interviews, um, just whether it be with a store that maybe got hit with forged money um, or just somebody connected to the case. 7.7% .7 analyzed either financial, business, or electronic records that you could find in a store, per se. Um, and 0% used undercover operations. This is also my pie chart for forgery. So in my comparison, I noticed during my research that in every criminal investigation episode that I watched, the crime was solved. Whereas real life, it's the complete opposite. Not every crime is solved in real life. So that is pretty unrealistic. Um, a few more are television has overly dramatized equipment such as computerized buses, gadgets, and made up technology inside used to solve the cases. And on television, not one police officer was told to write paperwork after releasing his firearm, which in real life does happen the moment you unbuckle your holder. These unrealistic and overly dramatized aspects of criminal television can cause the CSI effect creating bias and then moving into an over expectation of what police and our justice system can actually do on the job. So my ethical consideration throughout my research, I have maintained ethics by keeping anyone involved in a real life investigation anonymous. All of my data is pure math and has kept people out of it. No questioning was done because it could have caused past trauma of a victim to be removed. So for my next steps, um, the next researcher should take a look for some more realistic television shows. Um, they should read into some more field manuals and take a look into some deeper connections between criminals themselves and television in real life. The next researcher should also make sure to get an expert advisor who can give some extra insight into a primary source perspective. So what am I missing? In my research, I am actually missing my data on my robbery section um, due to loss of time and underestimation of the amount of work that was needed to be done. I believe it would be beneficial to the next researcher to take a deeper look into the mail field manuals and hands-on work done by officers and detectives. So for potential issues, um, potential, potential issue that the next researcher may come, come across that I also did is that the FBI are very secretive with their information, um, which is understandable, but it does make it a little bit harder to find real life criminal investigations and compare them to episodes due to that. Um, whether that be just how they handle cases. Because, you know, if you think about it, they can't put everything out there. You know, a criminal could read that and say, I know exactly how they're gonna solve this case, so I'm gonna do it a different way. So it's understandable, but it does make it very hard. Um, and the next research, researcher needs to be aware of their time. This research, research takes so much patience and discipline. Um, and if you get caught up, you'll run out of time on your work. And that is all the time that I have. All right, so I would like to ask two questions. Which of the various perspectives you explored was the most difficult for you to incorporate into your research inquiry and why? Um, I would think that the hardest one would probably be forgery, um, just because it's a pretty secretive crime that happens. Um, whereas like compared to murder, it's pretty, it's out there. It happens a lot. They kind of know how things are done. Forgery is a very specific type of crime and it takes a lot of research to really get down to the fine points. Um, just realizing how it's actually done, what kinds of forgeries there are, 
um, you know, try to find people who are experts on that, that know what they're talking about, and know how to study it. So that was probably the hardest one that I dealt with. All right, and your second question. If you could revisit the research process, what would you do differently? Would you choose a different area of inquiry? And if so, why? If you would choose the same research project goal, what different methods or approaches would you seek? Um, I don't think I would change my method of inquiry too much. Um, I think it would just be a matter of time with making sure that I really was super disciplined, um, making sure that I was on top of my work and that I had enough time because like I said before, I didn't underestimate the amount of time that I had compared to the amount of work that I had. Um, so that would probably just be something that I would have fixed is making, you know, giving myself a little less work and a little more time to do it. Thank you so much for your answers.